So you want to make a roguelike. Roguelike was a term that originally meant a game like Rogue, which is an older game that doesn't look like most modern roguelikes. The meaning of the word has adjusted over time to focus on two core traits that Rogue had, which was permadeath, which is really easy to do because you just delete the save file when you die, or don't save in the first place, and randomized levels, which is the tricky part because that includes enemies, upgrades, combat, and the rest of the game itself. We've covered different aspects of a roguelike game in different videos, so I'm going to put those tutorial videos into a playlist and stick that at the end. But for this video, we're going to be taking apart a game that I, the person behind this voice, have been working on in my spare time. It's probably best described as an action roguelike, but it should still be an interesting example. A quick disclaimer, this game is still a work in progress, so it might not look great, and it might not be perfectly optimized. But I'm mostly going to go over concepts rather than going deep into the events. So let's just start with the character. This game has four different characters, and all of them are inside the same object. They're just different animations. So in the overworld, when you pick a character, it will change a global variable from 0 to 3, based on which character you picked. And then in-game, the animations for the character, which in this case are just idle and walk, are picked by the number that correlates to the animation number. So for the idle animation, it's just that variable, times by 2, because there's two animations per character, and then for walking, we add 1, to pick the walking animation. If you have characters that have vastly different movement styles and mechanics, you might want to use different objects, but in my game it's mostly cosmetic, so having all of the characters in one object is simpler. And then for shooting, I'm using the Fire Bullet extension, which you can install, put on the character object, and then in-game, use the action Fire Bullet when the left mouse button is pressed. And you don't need to worry about the rest of these actions, because those are just effects, like creating the dust particles, shaking the gun, playing a sound, and the recoil on the gun. For the enemy AI, their controls are based on their animations. So when the ghost is in idle, it'll move towards the character. But once the ghost gets within a certain range, it'll change to charging, and then when that animation finishes, it'll fire a bullet, using the fire bullet extension, change to its resting animation, and then after its resting animation it will change back to idle. But if the player is still in range, it will go straight back to charging. To shoot again. And if you shoot the ghost enemy, regardless of where it is in its animation, it will switch over to hurt. Some enemies will have some other specific mechanics, but for all of them, the animation that's playing controls what they do and when they do it. Now for the room generation, in my game there is no permanent dungeon being generated. We do have a video though and it will be at the playlist at the end. But in my game, every time you move to a new room, it creates a new room and deletes the old one. And if I pull out these layers, you can see what each room is made of. Each room consists of a trap, doors, a floor, walls, its own unique vignette, and room vegetation, which I'm using to randomize how each room looks. So when you move over to a new room, we pick an animation for the room floor based on the door we came through, and then pick the walls and doors based on that, but then the vignette, traps, and room vegetation are all picked randomly. So each time you walk into a new room, it will look different, but also, the enemies that will spawn are different. So let's talk about the enemy spawning, and the damage level. So each time you walk into a new room, the damage level goes up by 0.2. And what I have set up is a scaling list of enemy spawns based on that damage level. So the further into the game you get, more enemies will spawn in each room, and more difficult ones will spawn. So you can see that if the damage level is less than 3, but above 1, it will pick enemies using this scene variable that's picked above. In the first room we go into, we're going to get two ghosts, and, based on that number, another ghost, a spider, a slime, two bees, or a another ghost. And then as you go further down the list, you get more enemies per room, and you start seeing new enemies that you didn't before. And then for scaling their health, all of the enemies are using the health extension. So repeating for every instance of an enemy, we set the health of the enemy group, which is a group that has all the enemies in it, to the health of the enemy group times the damage level divided by two. So every time the damage level goes up a whole number, it's a new number being timesed 
against their health, so they show up with more health as you get further into the game, which makes the next part really important. If we go over to the scene variables, you'll see that I have character stats. Accuracy, defense, fire rate, health, power, and so on. And those are used to tweak the gameplay. So for example, when a bullet hits an enemy, it reduces that enemy's health using the scene variable for power. And those stats are changed using upgrades, which in my game are set up as animations. So once you've gone a certain distance into the damage level, these coins will pop up. And when they pop up, we change their animation to an integer between zero and however many upgrades I have. And then when I click on a coin, it will adjust those scene variables to make me harder, faster, stronger, whatever. So I can survive longer in the game. And those are the basics of how the game works. The base version of this game, with three enemies, one character, and one gun, is entirely free for you to use in the engine. So you can open it up and learn from it, or open it up and build off of it to make your own game. There's a link to that in the description, but as for that playlist I mentioned, with videos that are relevant to roguelikes, that playlist is right here.